In the beginning, there was nothing. Somehow, out of this nothing, came everything. Out of this vibrant nothingness, matter, energy, space, time, consciousness, mind, emerged, came out. How is it that something as unconscious as the matter of the brain can ever give rise to something as immaterial as an experience? If you want to see fear in a quantum physicist's eyes, just mention the words, the measurement problem. The measurement problem is this. An atom only appears in a particular place if you measure it. In other words, an atom is spread out all over the place until a conscious observer decides to look at it. So the act of measurement or observation creates the entire universe. Only conscious beings can be observers, then we're intimately hooked in to the very existence of reality. Without us, there would just be this expanding superposition of possibilities with nothing definite ever actually happening. Out of millions and millions of blobs of energy and light, photons and electrons, they make up this uh, imaginary three-dimensional solid world which doesn't exist at all according to uh, relativity or quantum mechanics. Anytime we attempt to look at particles beyond a certain level, the very act of observation changes things. And in addition, the more you look at individual particles, the more you realize that there is no such thing as one electron. An electron or any elementary particle exists only in relationship to other things, like other particles or, or the universe at large. This means that, that deeply enough, when you de dive down into the nature of matter, everything we know about the, the everyday world dissolves. There are no objects anymore, there are only relationships. There's no locality anymore, there's no time anymore. The more you look at something in detail, in what we think of as solid matter, the less and less solid it begins to look. The only realities we know are the ones our brain manufactures. Our brain receives millions of signals every minute and we organize them into holograms which we project outside ourselves and call reality. Well, if the brain cortex, uh, if it is also a hologram, then it's a three-dimensional hologram. If two-dimensional holograms reconstruct three-dimensional images, then, ergo, it follows that three-dimensional holograms reconstruct a hologram is a metaphor. It is how you take n dimensions of information and you bring them down into n minus one dimensions. It's a way of relating the paradoxes that we find in how to make a leap from this concept to that concept. The conceptual pigeonholes we use, words, to, to describe reality are phenomena inside our head. They're not out there. And most of the time, this is a philosophical quibble. When, but when you get down to quantum physics, and this is one of the reasons that Bohm came up the holographic idea, it, it starts to have real effects. And one of those is it's been discovered that if you take uh, two subatomic particles like electrons, in certain instances, when you do something to one, it will always affect the other, no matter how far apart they are. Well, how can this be? But what this tells us is that once matter is physically joined, even when it becomes separate, the energy is still there that's connecting it. And this is why it's important to me, because if we go back far enough in time, all the particles of matter of this entire universe that are expanding were all meshed together in a single particle about the size of a green pea, is what scientists tell us today, is what the computer models suggest. That if you could go into the universe today and take all the particles of matter and take out all the space in between and bring it together and compress it into a size of a single green pea, it means that you and me and every one of our listeners, we were all once part of that same particle that creates this whole universe today. And even though those particles are now separate and expanding, and, and the studies show that they are, energetically we're all still linked. So an atom and its electron are multiversal objects. And that multiversal object is what the quantum mechanics is describing. Now, that means that the parallel universe aspect of reality, as described by quantum theory, must apply to objects of all sizes. Humans, stars, galaxies, everything. And that's why we call it the parallel universe theory, rather than just parallel electrons theory. 
because we ourselves are made of atoms after all. We are, and, and uh, that's right. And the same theory that says that the atoms exist in more than one place in different universes says that we humans also exist in more than one place and in more than one state of mind and so forth in different universes. And so what that means, talking about words, is that there is no separation between electrons. Furthermore, there's no separation between people. Everything is interconnected. And the biggest secret of all, to me, is the extent to which individuality is an illusion. Illusion comes from how our minds perceive. My illusion comes from my mind. Your illusion comes from your mind. You do not need to search, do all, need all to search of anywhere the else for the source of illusion. Wherever we search externally, we cannot find the source of illusion because your illusions come from within your mind. The big thing we're talking about here is a new way of thinking about this thing we call the person, the self, the beingness, the I. And as we begin to modify what we mean by that, we can begin to see and touch upon this infinite realm that I'm speaking about. Infinities are part of the boundary of your existence. That is, viewed from this perspective, everything can be divided to infinity. If you've ever wondered why nuclear power is a million times more powerful than chemical energy, it's because chemical energy results from the manipulation of atoms in a molecule. Nuclear energy results from the manipulation of nucleons in a nucleus. The super unified scale, a thousand, million, million, million times smaller, is virtually infinite in its dynamism. If you're seeking the infinite, what instruments do you have to seek the infinite? Only sense organs, isn't it? So through your sense organs, if you're seeking the infinite, it is like wanting to go to moon with a bullock cart. Isn't it so? That is the plight of humanity right now. With a limited perception, they're trying to grasp that is which is beyond. So we try to perceive at the ultimate level of reality, and we search for any kind of method. For example, new technology, atomic power, etc. But search as we might, we cannot perceive the ultimate level of reality using these mechanisms. The ultimate level of reality is fundamentally empty we cannot find and not observable true. using these we scientific methods. Yeah. Science is involved in a perceptual enterprise, not, in, not primarily in gaining knowledge, though knowledge appears, but knowledge is a byproduct. And by understanding the thing, you can coherently let our contact with it as long as it is coherent. It shows that our understanding is correct. You see, we must distinguish between correct appearances and incorrect appearances or illusory. Your appearance now is what we call residual self-image. It is the mental projection of your digital self. This is real. What is real? How do you define real? If you're talking about what you can feel, what you can smell, you can taste and see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. Our brains take information in and sometimes give it a form. It's not that the picture is out there, it's that we're getting data that we're turning into a picture according to our own belief systems and our own unconscious belief systems as well. We know what is going on is that light comes in through the eyes, hits the back of the retina, triggers electrochemical impulses which travel down nerve fibers to the back of the brain where the brain very cleverly in about a tenth of a second puts it all together and says this is what it looks like out there well uh, you're creating your own reality tunnel that doesn't mean you're creating reality uh, out, out of reality whatever that is out of the infinite flux of energy you're creating your own uh, reality tunnel and uh, uh, most people aren't aware of it. Most people aren't aware of it. All matter is merely energy condensed to a slow vibration. That we are all one consciousness experiencing itself subjectively. There is no such thing as death. Life is only a dream. 
and we are the imagination of ourselves. Tonight's talk is Consciousness, Creativity, and the Brain. And um, if you have a golf ball size consciousness, when you read a book, you'll have a golf ball size understanding. When you look out, a golf ball size awareness. And when you wake up in the morning, a golf ball size wakefulness. But if you could expand that consciousness, then you read the book, more understanding. You look out, more awareness, and when you wake up, more wakefulness. It's consciousness. And there's an ocean of pure, vibrant consciousness inside each one of us. And it's right at the source and base of mind, right at the source of thought, and it's also at the source of all matter. There is no matter as such. All matter originates and exists only by virtue of a force which brings the particle of an atom to vibration and holds this most minute solar system of the atom together. We must assume behind this force the existence of a conscious and intelligent mind. This mind is the matrix of all matter. Matter seems like a good place to begin. The solidity of the world seems totally indisputable. As a fixed thing that you can see and touch, your body is also reassuringly solid. But beginning with Einstein, modern physics has assured us that this solidity is a mirage. All of physical matter, everything we have around us, is the result of a frequency. And what that also means is that if you amplify the frequency, the structure of the matter will change. What this self-contained system is a hologram, which is what I call the super hologram. Everything within it is an expression of that hologram. Uh, this is the, one of the great um, characteristics of a hologram is that every part of a holographic picture is a smaller version of the whole it's as if reality is so connected that no, when you look at one small part you can see things about other parts that the entire whole is contained in the part and in a sense you can't divide reality up because we're cutting up a hologram we can't find where one particle is because it's always a reflection of all particles in a hologram the whole pattern is whole and complete unto itself and if you were to take any little portion of this whole out and examine it closely, you will see the entire pattern repeating itself again and again and again. Anywhere in this pattern, if we were to change one little aspect on any one of these little holograms, that change would be reflected throughout the entire system. Quantum physics has revealed what ancient masters knew. Matter does not exist. The concept of substance arose from the philosophy of Aristotle. And from that concept came science's conception of matter. The fact of the matter is that the substance of the universe is consciousness. Belief that the substance of the universe is matter leads to what I call a fear-brain dichotomy as people in their quiet desperation attempt to accumulate as many material uh, 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 possessions and riches as possible. In fact, the substance of the universe is consciousness. Therefore, it is behavior that is important. If you um, get into the realms of fear, fear is a very slow, dense, vibrational state. And the more you, you, you embody fear, and the whole of this manipulated society is globally, is structured to make us fear, to make us have stress, to make us worry about tomorrow, uh, and have guilt about yesterday, um, and forget about now. It brings us into a, a slow, vibrating, dense state. We should be very careful about what we believe about the future, 
the more you attach to a belief system, the more, if reality is holographic, you're helping create it by believing it. And you know, the great clairvoyant Edgar Cayce said that our every thought, that reality is built out of thought, and our every thought starts to build reality, and we're like, every thought is like a spider, we're like spider spinning web, and that web starts to build and build. Information um, is the key, because this matrix, um, this illusory reality that we think is real, people say to me, what is the matrix? Answer, it's information. Information creates fractals. Uh, as information flow increases, the number of fractals, mathematically speaking, increase. This was demonstrated by a mathematician named Theodore Gordon. Fractals are unpredictable functions, so things are becoming more and more unpredictable. When you start getting into um, fractals and chaos theory, when you look at it in terms of a society, this is where it, it starts to cross over into the so-called Illuminati or the negative elite, the world leaders, with their philosophy of order out of chaos. There is some truth to that, in the sense that when the system becomes highly destabilized, there will be random shifts that suddenly self-organize into higher complexity. These atoms are particles that are whirling at lightning speeds around huge empty spaces. And the particles aren't material objects. They are fluctuations of energy and information in a huge void of energy and information. What the science now is showing is that when you can change the field that the atom is in, you change the atom. We're made of those atoms. So when we have feelings in our hearts, we're changing the field uh, that connects the stuff everything is made of, and we literally are altering our physical reality. Once you establish the reality we live in, and the nature of what the physical body is, this biological computer, and the nature of what we are, which is consciousness, and then you start, as I have, um, looking at the way this world is structured and how it works and why they do this and why they do that, it suddenly brings into uh, crystal clarity why the world is structured as it is. Because, you know, people look through their eyes and they think this is the world, but it isn't. It's a tiny, tiny frequency range within an infinite energy field of infinite frequency ranges. And basically it's like a holographic television channel. It is the act of consciousness that actually creates the building block the universe is made of. I can't imagine a universe that exists without us because it's the act of us observing the world around us that is creating, allowing us to create as we go in a participatory universe. We may never find the edge of our universe as we're looking to define what, what this universe looks like. We may never find the smallest particle uh, in, in the quantum world to see what this stuff is that we're made out of. And the reason is because everywhere we look, everywhere that consciousness explores with the expectation that something will be there, that exploration, that act of looking, observation is the act that creates something for us to see. That we are actually building this universe as we go. Consciousness is the programming language of the universe. We are consciousness conductors, that's what we do, that's who we are. Mm. Consciousness comes through us, it emanates from us. We are the creators, uh, we are the ones who are targeted on this planet because we are the ones who transmit the reality just like everybody else does. If you switch your brain off and you are sucked into the, the mainstream media illusion, we must understand that we are being used because we create reality, so if we are manipulated, in a certain way, and if we are modulated in a certain way, then our creation becomes not ours, but somebody else's. And what happens if we all do it? Everyone in this room decides to take control of reality. I'm talking about reality, I'm talking about quantum physics, I'm talking about taking control of things from the quantum level up, from the molecular level up, and it works. The world is like a ride at an amusement park, and when you choose to go on it, you think it's real, because that's how powerful our minds are. And the ride goes up and down and round and round. It has thrills and chills, and it's very brightly colored, and it's very loud, and it's fun for a while. Some people have been on the ride for a long time, and they begin to question, is this real, or is this just a ride? And other people have remembered, and they come back to us, and they say, hey, don't worry, don't be afraid, ever, because 